Vodafone cares about you and your health. Through our 255 call center, we have empowered Ghanaians from across the country with our unique phone-in medical consultancy. We also bring you Health Fest, where a trained medical team travel the nation giving free medical treatment. But it all started here on your TV screen with the award-winning television program, Healthline. This week on Healthline, the street doctor shows us how to mosquito-proof a house. And we meet Nicholas, who has had a nasty accident. When it comes to living a healthy lifestyle, there's no I'll start tomorrow. Tomorrow is a disease. So what are we waiting for? Let's get the show started. But first, meet my friends. This Bright. Hello, everyone. The ever gorgeous Ruth. Hi. Papani. Hi. And I'm Lorraine. Okay, we take an SMS from Mamie Fua from Winneba. She sent this question. A few weeks ago, I was playing with my daughter and she headed me in the nose and it was bleeding. It is still painful and hard to breathe. What should I do? Usually, the commonest thing that presents in this way is what we call a fracture of your nose. You're wondering how you can fracture your nose because it looks like it's flesh all around. But the thing is that your nose is divided into two by what we call a septum. So there's some kind of a bone and then a softer bone-like thing called cartilage. When you have a force, a blunt force, like in the case of your daughter, hitting that part, the bridge of your nose, you can fracture this bone. Usually, for some people, it doesn't displace. Although you feel a sudden pain, everything seems normal, nothing changes about it, and you're fine. But these are signs you should look out for. If you feel that sudden impact on your nose, and then suddenly you feel like your whole nose is beginning to swell up, and then you can't breathe, and then you feel like your nose is deviated in a way, or you see blood coming from your nostrils, or coming through the back into your mouth. And for people who are light-skinned or white people, you can actually see what looks like bluish blood, and that's what we call a hematoma. It's like a collection of blood where the bone was broken. If that happens, the best time to intervene is within the first two weeks. We can have it fixed if it's broken, okay? And then they can put some kind of a cast there to keep it in place and allow it to heal. If you spend more than two weeks at home, however, I mean, for it's unfortunate, they may have to wait for longer before they intervene. So despite the fact that too much time has elapsed, I still advise you see your doctor. They may put you on some cover while they wait to do a definitive management for you. The street doctor is out and about. Today we're talking about malaria prevention. You know malaria is one of the diseases that actually kills children under five and even adults as well. Let's go see what you can do to malaria-proof your own home. Okay, so now we're talking about making sure that mosquitoes don't get into your house. So what you want to do, you want to have good meshes to prevent mosquitoes from coming into your house. You want meshes that are clear and that are complete, no tears or anything like that. So hey, you don't want to have that because then your mosquitoes get to slide in and again to your house, they infiltrate your barricade and now you're exposed to them. Don't try and use sellotape or paper because they can still fly in. So get a whole mesh that's of really good quality and make sure that you don't allow mosquitoes to enter your house. Let's go see what happens inside. Okay, so now your mosquitoes are in your house. What do you do to prevent yourself from getting bitten? I'll give you a couple of options. Mosquito coil. You can find this anywhere, you can buy this anywhere. Just get a mosquito coil, put it on its stand, light it on fire. It lasts for a very long time. The smoke is kind of repulsive to the mosquitoes, so they don't want to come around you. So you can light it up in a place where you, you know you're going to be sitting, maybe even outside you can use it. The mosquitoes don't come around you at that point. 
Something else you might want to do is get yourself some mosquito repellent. Now this is a cream you can actually just put on yourself, maybe in the evening after you shower. You just apply the cream on yourself. The mosquitoes can't come near you because they can't stand the chemical that's on your skin. Also, you could actually get yourself some insecticide spray. Now this is for your room. So let's say you want to make sure that your room is clear of mosquitoes. You enter your room, close your windows, you spray the whole area, wait for about 15 minutes, come back in, and the mosquitoes will be dead. But remember, it's only the mosquitoes in the room that are dead. The mosquitoes outside may also be waiting to get in because they know, hey, the coast is clear now. Try these things and they will actually help prevent you from getting mosquito bites. Okay, so now it's time to go to bed. You might want to get yourself a mosquito net, preferably insecticide treated. It's when the mosquitoes sit on them, they die. Now what you also want to make sure is that you want your mosquito nets to be complete. Again, no holes. The mosquitoes get to fly through these holes and sit there with you and spend the whole night with you. And one that doesn't lie low to your skin. So at least the mosquitoes don't get the chance to bite you when you sleep. What do you know about immunization? How does your child benefit from it? Join in the discussion on Kids Corner. I'm sure we've heard about killer diseases or diseases that affect our children and cause them so much harm. Immunization is a way by which we can vaccinate our children and get them to become immune to these diseases. You know, when you go to the postnatal clinics, the emphasis is not about your white carbine slits. Because when you go the fresh mothers, it's about white slippers, white shoes. That is not the emphasis. The emphasis is not a fashion parade. Some high thinkers somewhere out there realize that no, children under the age of five are dying and there are certain diseases that kill them. So there was basically a protocol put together to immunize these children. And you need to make sure that it is up to date because there's usually a program. There are scheduled times for each vaccination. So you make sure that you stick to it. If you are told, come on this date, you make sure you come at that date and then we follow through right till the end. We want your kids in so that we give them the vaccination and protect them. When you get the vaccine, the process of giving you the vaccine is what we call vaccination. The fact that you've been given the vaccine does not mean you're immunized. That's the reason why they give you one shot of the same thing and they ask you, okay, come back in six weeks time and let me repeat it. The idea is I want to give you as many vaccines as you need until you build immunity. So keep to your schedules, finish it up, and get your boosters. That's what really protects you from the diseases. The expanded program of immunization can be found in the child's weighing card. The program is as follows. At birth, the child receives BCG and polio. At six weeks, 10 weeks, and 14 weeks, the child receives the five-in-one vaccine and the polio vaccine. And at nine months, the child receives the yellow fever vaccine, measles, mumps, and rubella. At the age of six months, and for every six months subsequently, the child receives vitamin A supplementation till the age of five years. Ask if you're not sure. We're here to set the record straight on Mythbusters. We have a question from our audience. Hello, Dr. Teth. My friends were telling me that Ebola can be treated with dandelion. Is that true? Definitely, there's no research or evidence to show that it can treat or manage Ebola. Ebola is actually caused by a virus, just simply known as the Ebola virus. And this is known to have been transmitted from bats through animals like monkeys to human beings and causes a whole lot of problems. First of all, some of the signs you actually begin to experience if you have the Ebola virus, you feel feverish, you have chills, you have headaches, you have body pain. Now these symptoms are so non-specific. In other words, you can have typhoid fever and have all these symptoms. You can have malaria and have all these symptoms. But then as the disease progresses, then you begin to have vomiting, diarrhea. Sometimes when you vomit, you realize there's blood in your vomit, there's blood in the stool, and you also begin to realize that your kidney stops functioning, your liver stops functioning. Then later you start to have blood oozing out of your eyes, your ears, your nose. So it's usually known as a hemorrhagic disease. Now, there's no cure for Ebola. And your only chance at surviving Ebola is by reporting early to the health facility that has been designated to manage Ebola virus. So if you've been to any of these Ebola affected areas and you start feeling ill, 
Just make sure that you get to the nearest health facility for you to be assessed. The following segment contains material of an adult nature. Viewer discretion is advised. Healthline delivers honest sex advice and tips for a healthy sexual life. We have an SMS from Nanama who lives in Takwa. She asks, is it normal to feel for sex when you're pregnant? Nanama, really, I'm wondering why it would not be good. It's very normal. Truth is, when you're pregnant, your womb is actually sealed. There is no contact between what goes on in the vagina and what goes on in the uterus. That's where the baby is. It's sealed off. And that's God in his own wisdom making it like that. The only time that ceiling gives way is when you're ready to bring that baby out. In fact, some time in pregnancy, there's a lot of parts. Having sex can actually make things very easy for you. And this is because the semen that is introduced every time you have sexual intercourse has some substances called prostaglandins. And what they do is that they make the cervix, that's the opening of the womb, soft so that it opens easily and allows the baby to come out. So your labor is quicker. Usually in the first trimester, a lot of women feel so uncomfortable, you're bloated, you feel ill, you're throwing up, you probably have heartburn. So usually this is accompanied by a decreased libido or a decreased craving for sex. But then in the second and third trimesters, there is usually a hormonal peak, which is also associated with increased dry for sex but the most important thing is that both parties are willing especially the pregnant lady because this is the time where you have to take it easy on them and give her a foot massage after that she deserves it although it's normal some complications of pregnancy may make us tell you not to have sex your doctor may specifically tell you please take a break if you're told to take a break please do Nanama thank you for your question we'll be right back Not even in your wildest imagination will you fathom the kind of pain Nicholas went through in the event that led to the loss of his eye. The following scenes contain images that could disturb sensitive viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Nicholas Mensah is 28 years old. He had an injury, he fell down, and a stick pierced the eye. So the whole eyeball came out. And now he's got a, what to call a tropion. The eyelids have turned outwards, exposing all the structures within the socket. It's not pleasant to see it. And for a young man like him, that's definitely going to affect his quality of life. Not just that, but the way the structures are exposed, He's also prone to infection. Infection around the eye can spread to a brain. It can be very dangerous for him. I'm from the class of the Ashoma Estate. I'm from the Minete and my sister. I said my prayer, my cataxi will be on the crop. It's not my cost of ye, and my back grassy. Back grassy is when I may buy a painting, you ma. I saw on a pony a doffy. Eh, see a doffy, sir, no, and I make a cement door, Timmy Co, Cromaba. The one I may brandish a chimney. One Sunday. We plan to do a general cleaning around our house. Nicholas was holding some money and then I said, oh, you should give me the money. He said, oh, you won't give me. You see, actually we used to play, like joke, and then I collected the money from his hand. So he too, he was struggling to take the money back. So we both fell on the floor. So as we fell, there was a stick that is on the floor. So the stick took his uh, eye, and the eyeball removed from the shell. At first, I don't know the thing was serious. I thought he was joking, because as he lying, his face downwards. So I can't see what happened to his eye. 
So when we turned here, I saw the eye. I saw blood spread on the floor. And then the eye, how the eye removed. As I saw the thing, I was afraid, so I shout. I shout. There was a taxi uh, driver in the house, so we asked him to take us to the hospital. We sent him to the emergency room, so the doctors started working on him, giving him medications and all those kind of things. The boy was not my tissue, my tissue. Many team, many so team, in the hospital. The time we get to the hospital, I was so much worried. I fear him, through that he may die. And after that, they said, oh, they have to do x-ray for him. So as we were carrying him to the x-ray room, there was a blood that was coming out from the eye, spreading on the floor. After the doctor saw him, he asked us to go out. They will come back 4 o'clock. Nicholas's sister, Rita, was called urgently to the hospital. She didn't know what to expect. Abnormal. Sometimes, like me, if he see me, he can't. He cannot recognize me. I also used to remove the bandage, and he don't talk. If he talk, he won't understand what he's trying to say. If it's hospital, over ten hours and change. Every three days, I call 37 one call Every three days, I call. First, then I got to first one. Then I didn't see him, so I be a bit Or one hour drink, to be all soup. So I said, I'm a bomb. To one as I rewired, I come. After we came back from the hospital, each time I see him, I used to feel guilty. And then so much worried. And maybe at times my heart used to beat. Uh, it's like I caught somebody blind. And I feel sorry how the whole thing happened. Hey, we no say that. We no go any akefifia. No no say we let us say anamga. Akefifia ga. I go vaja do. And do do as well. That many men may have one and me and Amu. I've never done a mutina gum. I've never done that. And ma a tere a Nico Cranji, a gombe a to a tomelago. Hang in the car over vessel cellar, a tere jibe ejedo. Omuya man, I say. But I in this sky, we have said the artificial. As in, I'm not born as a woman, I'm a new mommy. But as a as a certain driver, I'm here.
Vodafone stepped in to help Nicholas get the treatment he so desperately needs. A Vodafone would like to thank the Crystal Eye Clinic for all they have done for Nicholas and his family. What we are going to do is that um, they are going to put him to sleep and then we will explore the socket, make sure that there is no foreign body inside it. After that we are going to invert the eyelids, we are going to turn them inwards and then find a way of securing them in the normal position. We freed some scar tissue and then opened up the sockets. After that, we put in a silicone ball implant and sewed the tissue over the ball. And then we put what we call a conformer on top of it and sewed the eyelid over it. So after a while, when the tissues go back to their normal size and the eyelid regains its tone, they will put a prosthesis on top of it to make it look like the unoperated eye. First, <laughs> Nicholas now has an artificial eye and is training his muscles to operate again, which will give him a more normal appearance in time. What if we say, I'm a boy, but I'm a boy, I'm a baby, I'm a girl, I'm a baby, so I'm a sissy, I'm a whole toy, I'm a baby, so so so, I'm a girl, I'm a girl, I'm a boy, I'm a boy, I'm a girl, I'm a sissy, I'm a baby, so so so, I'm a girl, I'm a boy, 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 I'm a girl, this is where we draw the curtain on this week's show. I've had a wonderful time and I hope you have too. Next week, we bring you some more stories from the field. Until then, eat well, sleep well and keep fit. Goodbye. If you have been moved by the stories or issues you've seen on Healthline, you can donate one Ghana CD by texting GIVE to 133. If you want to donate more than one Ghana CD, please dial star 133 hash and follow the prompts. Next week on Healthline, we visit an organization that is striving to rid Ghana of HIV. And we catch up with Martin from last season.